Hello BookTube. I have another tag that I want to do for you today on this Tag Tuesday. I'm doing a string of tags, uh, not only because I always feel a little bit irrationally that I have a backlog, but also because a lot of these tags have a commonality, which is that they are answering get-to-know-you kind of questions. And that's important. We all need to remember that new people are finding our channels all the time. New people are finding BookTube all the time. So it's good to to regularly, you know, go over some of the basics. And this, the tag that I want to do right now, does go over some of those basics. This is not really a go and hunt through your shelves type of tag. I, this is actually the kind of tag I really love. It's called the How Do You Find Time book tag. And it was created by Josh at Working Man Reads. I'll leave a link to his channel. And it's mainly just a collection of uh, questions about where reading fits into your day. Uh, number one is, what is your favorite place to read? Quite literally, where it fits in your day. And I've often said, as an answer to this kind of question, that I have two places. I'll read anywhere. But I've often said that I have two places. The bed, propped up on pillows. Or the little couch in the, in the other room also propped up on pillows. Uh, and the reason, the main reason why I've done that is because, uh, typically speaking, the, the couch, the, it's situated in the corner of a room with windows on either side of it, which is great in the warm months, but it makes that corner very cold uh, in the winter months. And the reason that I've always said two locations is because sometimes it has been my experience that the winter just, that corner just gets too cold, no matter what, no matter how high you have the heat on. But, there's been a slight relocation here at Hyde Cottage. The, everything old is new again. All the, the physical situation is exactly the same, but the heating is better. So it turns out, I have discovered this winter, this has also been a fairly mild winter for Boston, not for the rest of the country, I realize is a touchy thing to say right now, since a large part of the country, including the southern border, is experiencing bitterly cold weather. But in Boston, it's been fairly mild. And I have noticed this at, in this new setup, this new old setup, that the corner out there with the couch is perfectly comfortable, even on a very cold day, because the heating is better, even though the position is exactly the same with windows on either side. And it's better to do, uh, my, reading is work. We're going to get to that later in this tag. For me, reading is work. Fun, but still work. And there's lots of other things that go with it. There's emails, there's Zoom calls with editors and with writers, there's all sorts of stuff like that. And it is better, the, the, the dude bro productivity channels on YouTube that always say you should separate, that you should have a place to go to do your work, they aren't completely wrong about that, the way they're completely wrong about almost everything else. It is actually very helpful, mentally, to say, all right, well, I'm lounging around in bed, I'm, I'm reading in bed for fun, I'm cuddling with the dog in bed. When we move over to the couch, then I'm going to be working, I'm going to be sitting up and working. That is really good. I, I like that change. So this time around, I only have one place. I typically read on that couch. All day long and late into the night. Late, late into the night. There's no real reason to, to change locations, except if, if I, I somehow want to sleep, in which case I will, I will move over. I do a lot of reading on the bed, but I do most of it now on that couch and all the writing. Uh, then prompt number two is, do you read every day? I do. I do. I read every day, all day. I read every night, all night. Many nights where I just dispense with sleep entirely, and even the nights when I don't dispense with sleep entirely. It's not the nine hours of being a drooling coma patient that you are. I, no, it's, I read all the time. Every day. Yeah, the only exception to the rule happens at the very end of every year when I don't do any reading at all. <laughs> I don't do any thinking at all either. So, but all the rest of the time? Aside from that one little interval, all the rest of the time reading. Yeah, I read every day. A lot. Every day. Uh, prompt number three is, do you read out loud to any family members? And uh, Josh at Working Man Reads says you can indefinitely include a pet. And that's good, because I do. I will read out loud to Frida. My little my little miniature schnauzer. <laughs> Down on the floor there. She's looking at me because she's trying to maybe get me to go outside. I, I don't know that she's going to like that because it's raining. As soon as she realizes that, she's going to want to come back in. But, uh, She's always with me. She's always nearby. And when I'm on the couch, the aforementioned little couch, when we're when I'm sitting there reading and writing, she is always right there. And uh, that's great because that allows her to let me know if she needs something. If she wants to go outside, my answer is an immediate yes. Put down what I'm doing. No, never, you know, no. 
<laughs> like, I'm going to hurry up this tag because now I know she wants to go outside. Uh, in the course of a day, one of the benefits of having an unstructured day is that I get to do that. Oh, how many years did I have a retail job where I say goodbye to my dogs in the morning and they wanted something during the day? They couldn't have it. They just had to sit around and wait for me. Uh, no, that's not true here. Uh, uh, but sometimes if I encounter a passage that bothers me in a book, I will read it out loud to her. Uh, and always prose. Always large chunks of prose are very important to read. I know this isn't an author tube video, but it's very important to read your prose out loud. Very important. Uh, so yeah, Frida would be fun. Nobody else. Uh, then uh, prompt number four is what is your favorite career for a main character to have? Uh, and in my case, as predictable as it would be, it's the writer. I, I always find it interesting when writers try to capture the process of their daily life in the fiction that they're writing. And even nonfiction. For, I went, uh, there was a long period in my life where I didn't want to read author biographies. Now I find them extra fascinating. So, yeah, a writer in both fiction and nonfiction. Um, then question number five is, do you read at work? <laughs> this is going to be one of the most fascinating questions of this tag for me to listen to other people. That's why I want so many people to do this tag. Do you read at work? Uh, that, of course, has become a, a tangled answer for almost all of us since 2020 because work has moved home for so many people. Work has moved home. And may stay there forever. If you're a company and you have an office building, people driving to that office building and checking in every day, why would you ever rent that space again when you now know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you can do your whole thing remotely? Why would you ever, why would you ever do that again? Why would you continue to pay mortgage or rent on that space? I don't see many businesses wanting to do that for the, the, the intangible claim of it being somehow better for morale or productivity or accountability. To have people in an office, I don't know. I'll be interested in seeing what happens in, in later in 2021 and in 2022. But uh, for me, uh, I read at work because reading is my work. I, I'm a professional book critic. So reading, yeah, I read, I read at work. I read all the time and I am, I am commissioned to review a lot of what I read. So uh, the, for me, the, the two things are the same. That won't be true for most of you. And so I will be extremely nosy curious to know can you read at work that or if you're now working from home has it changed the variables of when you read and when you don't read i want to hear all about that uh and then the last one uh the last is uh something that i have a prompt for it's number six is what book are you reading now uh and i i actually have uh a prompt here i just read i'm not reading i'm not in the middle of a book right now i just finished this which i just got in the mail biblio mysteries edited by Otto Penzler. Uh, just a table of contents full of mysteries set around the world of books, collectible books, bookstores. And, you know, with any anthology, it had its ups and downs. But I thought, talk about being fascinated by writers writing about their own job, about writing. I just love that strand running throughout almost all of this book. There was hardly a dud in the thing. I just thought it was fantastic. I just finished that, and the next one up is this. Fairhaven Rising. This is the next book in uh, the, the Recluse saga that started so many years ago. I remember reading The Magic of Recluse, the first book. This is uh, a fantasy series. There's all sorts of others. This has gone on forever and ever. This also has, author also has an imager series that also has gone on forever and ever. And I'm invested. I don't know what kind of individual standalone merit literarily this will have, but I'm invested in the story. I've been reading this all along. So I, I will I will assess it on the basis of that individual standalone merit, but also uh, I will also love it. I'm sure that I will also love it because it will just pro, it will prolong a story that I've that I've come to like a lot. Uh, so that'll be the next thing that I do. It won't take long. That'll be the next one. And that's it. That is the how do you find time book tag. And I want to tag some people that are all brand new. They're all relatively new uh, to BookTube. Uh, to encourage them and, and you know, to, to welcome them on board, encourage them to keep making videos. And I will leave links to their channels down below. I want to tag uh, the bar in the bookcase, uh, excuse me, the book stack, uh, the reading mushroom, uh, a hilarious channel called Uncarly. I'm hoping you stick around. <laughs> we can definitely use you. And also Michael K. Vaughn. 
a frequent commenter who just started a channel of his own and who has a, a tiny handful of subscribers. I think he has two or three. He needs he needs more than that. All these people need more subscribers. So I'll leave a list of their channels and I urge you to go and if you like what you see, uh, subscribe. Uh, so there you go. That is, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot for three tags today uh, on this Tag Tuesday. Sort of max out on tags. Uh, so I'm going to wrap this up for now, uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, BookTube.